year one, G through K are year two. The first block here is your actuals. So you've got, these are actual FTSs and FTF and SFRs based on your actual enrollments as they come in. And that's something the staff will update. Um, when the APR comes in, the, the staff or yourselves can enter this information. Um, there's also a place here for, in the projection area, there's the FTS and SFR targets that you get from your budget reports. And that gets filled in with the, by the staff. There's also, when you're building your schedule, these cells here automatically populate based on what you're putting in as your projected enrollments. And so that's also your FTS, FTF, and SFRs. At the budget that you get from your budget report, the bottom line budget that includes everything with the, you know, the dean's allocations as well, is filled in here. The staff fill in the July and August payroll here because that goes against your NTTF. A lot of that's final settlements for contracts. Um, and this is, if there's questions on how to estimate that, there's comments here where the August payroll is, is for fall. And so that could actually be filled in now for year two based on December payroll. And July is the last paycheck for spring. So those can be filled out pretty early as estimates to help you stay within the budget. Going down, there's reassigned time summary. So you've got your funding rate, your unit funding rate, uh, the units that you were allocated for department chair, advising, if you have coordination, uh, tenure track in the first two years, and any sabbaticals or difference in pay leaves. And then there are any additional reassigned time that you're receiving can be put in here so that it adds into the budget up here. Um, any questions on the summary page, this annualized page, before I go on to the other pages? Yeah, I have a quick question, Shannon. Sean, um, where would, so if my faculty have a research grant that has buyout time, where would that go into that? reassign timeline um you can just type it in here okay okay so do a new one okay okay name. yeah yeah these are the other these light blue cells are fillable okay thanks the other cells are locked, 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 locked. any other questions before i go on Sandra, there's something in the chat oh from i can't blake. see the chat so some yes i know from blake <laughs> i know i know I i'm did. sorry i, I thought I, I had i thought i was muted but i wasn't i uh uh, I was just saying, you know, a recording of this. Oh, a recording. Oh, oh, you know, definitely, uh, uh, Stephanie, go ahead and turn that on. Okay. Like, I thought it said recoding, and I was like, okay, this is for Chanda because you want her to recode something. It's a typo. I don't even, I can't <laughs> type, so I might have said that. I just uh, think a static object could be useful as we go about this task. I so, think recording sure. is a great idea. Sure, and the staff have also asked me to to record instructions um, on some of the tasks that we do, and so I'm going to start putting those together as well. So I'll I'll add this into it, and we'll save them in a central location where all of you can access them. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay. So going on from here, uh, we've got this. So this template we rearranged a little bit because as chairs, you're doing the schedule part mostly. So we've got fall year one spring year one, fall year two, spring year two. And I'll, I'll go in on how to fill this in later. Let's go through the rest of these pages. Um, then we've got entitlements. These are just copied and pasted from the spreadsheet that Geraldine, or Geraldine sends out. And when you have new, new lectures coming in, you can type them in here. They will autofill into your costing sheets, but they have to be at the bottom line. You can't insert a line here to get them into a particular order. It won't pick up on the other sheet. Um, so it's important to add into the bottom. Uh, year two entitlements, when Gerilee sends those, Gerilyn, yeah, Gerilyn, <laughs> I get those names mixed up all the time. Gerilyn sends those, can just be copied and pasted into here, and they'll autofill into your costing sheets. Then, we have the fall schedule, year one costing, oops, should be at the top, and tenure track names. These, 
these, the fall WTUs automatically fill in based on the schedule. Uh, units from other programs, you would fill in manually. Any reassigned time, you can fill in manually. And you have a place to add notes, such as the source of the reassigned time or any other details you and the staff need to know. Um, this section down here where the lecturers are is automatically filled in from the entitlement sheet or from your entitlement sheets. So it fills in with the names, the annual entitlement units, the per rate units, and then what you've assigned them in the fall schedule and what that's going to cost. And this column includes any reassigned time that lecturers may have. Then there's the the delta between their reassigned time and what they're in, what they have on the fall schedule, and the complete cost of their entitlement than any reassigned time source here. And I, we have this for each semester. And one of the things that Phil and I were talking about the other day is I could change this to an annual costing if that would be better, easier for you guys to manage and see the annual entitlements and if your tenure track are meeting the 24 units over the year. Um, any feedback on that, it's something I could quickly put together in each of your templates and have it ready to go for you by the end of the week. So I'll wait to hear feedback on that. Um, it's the same with spring, except spring's a little bit shorter for the uh, non-tenure track because it doesn't have the it doesn't have the cost of entitlement added in. Um, let's see, going on here, the last page of the workbook is instructions. <laughs> so, any questions before I go on? I see there's a Looks like there's maybe some stuff in the chat. Oh, here we go. Okay, no, let, the me, chat. let me look at the chat and tell you. Okay. Um, yes, please, on the annual. Okay. Um, I think an additional annual page would be helpful. So, yes, on the annual, and you know my thoughts on that. It's a definite yes. <laughs> I hope. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, money is not paid out per month, you, you know, so salary right. would be good. But I like the tone of the comments, uh, Chanda, they seem to indicate and you can see them later, they seem to be indicating, in addition, an annual page, not a replacement of. Okay, I can okay. do that. All right. That's an easy easy addition for me. I don't see um, anything else written. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go into... Oh, Blake, you Blake? Like, please raise your oh, hand. I'm sorry. I, oh. I'm always here with the dumb questions. No, please. So, so this is a two-year plan, but the budget cycle is a one-year budget cycle. So is there, is there going to be an interface between the planning part of the two-year, or is that strictly just so we're, like, so we can map out our, our fantasy of the second year? Um, I think Maybe it's going to... No, it's okay. It's okay. I haven't mentioned anything about that. So what this will do is help us understand what your program's needs are as well. And we don't have the budget yet, so, you know, as this rolls forward, we have to make adjustments. But this way, you know you can meet... You know, you're matching your roadmaps, you're getting what your students need planned out. And we can see in the dean's office what the need is as far as budget goes. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, but there's no calculation of the second year budget from this. It's, all, it's the first year budget that's in all these pages you're describing. Yeah, the first year budget's in all the pages that we're describing because we had that because I filled in the first year for you guys. Um, based on this year, and year two is, until we have that budget, um, is going to be, just as in previous years, we're basically planning without a budget for, for fall semester. Okay. All right. So fall year two and how to use this. So um, when you're planning your fall schedule, this section up here is going to automatically fill in based on what you've entered here. And this is a table. It's not, um, you know, just a basic sheet. The tricky part is for you guys is when you're trying to insert lines, you can't do it here because these columns are locked. And so it won't allow you to insert. Um, you can add 
courses into the bottom and then ask us to rearrange them and I'm happy to do that. It takes me about a minute. Um, and so let's just go through how to enter these. So I'm gonna take an ESRM and just say 100 I'm, and then section one, fill in the title of the course. Actual enrollment won't be filled in until uh, enrollments start coming of course and your staff will keep that updated. Um, projected enrollment is going to be based on the analysis you've done on previous semesters and what you think your class is going to fill at. Um, so we'll just put in 30 here with a cap of 40, student units are 3, WTU is 3, and you can see things changing at the top there. Um, slide over a little bit. Learning mode. So here, all the learn, learning modes are here in the drop down menu. So we've got the online synchronous, we've got online asynchronous, we have uh, the face to face and the hybrid. So we'll just say that this one is face to face. Then we have the all the days patterns here. We'll say it's a Monday, Wednesday. 30 to, uh, you know, to 45. Okay, and then Sean, I'm going to use you as the instructor and in that. Okay, and so tenure track, and here's a drop down menu, you choose tenure track or lecturer. This section where you type in the instructor is where the pattern has to match. So you're going to copy the, if it's a lecture, you can copy the name from the entitlement page. If it's a tenure track, you can copy it from the uh, costing page. Um, the reason there's no space between the names, as proper grammar would indicate, <laughs> is when it comes out of PeopleSoft, there's no space. And so we'd have to go into Jara Lee's sheet and add spaces in. So I just matched her sheet to make it easier on all of us. Um, then you can choose your GE category. If it's a GE requirement, all the GE categories are here. I'm just going to give Sandai an opportunity to go through it and then uh, open it for questions. Thank you. Okay. And then you can choose if it's major required, yes or no. You can see your projected FTS and FTF are calculated. I'm going to change this to lecture so you can see that it calculates differently when it's a lecturer. Uh, based on they have a 15, you know, 30 unit per year workload for full time and, and tenure track of 24. Um, and then there's a place for comments. So you could put your room preference or any other comments you need the staff to know. And, okay, questions? Sandra, there's, uh, there's several questions. Um, the first is from uh, Jerry Lynn asking if you could add Sunday as an option for days. Oh, I did that in all of the nursing templates. Okay, so, so, okay. The Sunday, okay. Sunday is the only, only nursing has, and that is in, in there. Yeah, and, and I I'll just check. Said, right, and uh, then there's, uh, you know, a comment that, uh, you know, Blake noticed also that if you put the spaces in, he also got, um, you know, some errors because of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something from uh, Rebecca, and, um, you know, she's also commenting on the same thing, but copying and pasting from there. And then there's a couple of comments and questions. So I'm going to ask those who've raised their hands to go ahead and ask their question, please. Because Chanda can't really call on you. I think, so, yep, go ahead. So I have, uh, I guess one question is, when I was playing with the previous incarnation of this, mm -hmm to figure out the effect of canceling sections on SFR and FTS, I would zero out the projected enrollment, mm -hmm. and that would still leave a workload in the workload counter. It would still leave an FTEF. Is there some way to code it so that if you set the projected enrollment to zero, it calculates the FTF at zero rather than 0.2 or 0.25 or something like that? Does that um, make sense? Yeah, it does. The FTF is pulling from this WTU column. Okay, so I could just set that as zero. Set that as zero. Okay, got it. 
And then the other question or comment I have is that um, some GE classes have multiple GE attributes, even though that's against Senate policy. Is there a way to code for the multiple GE attributes? I tried that when I was looking at the GE requirements in some of the courses when I was filling that in for programs last semester. And um, I could not get it to do that. If somebody knows how, that would be great. They could show me, but I couldn't get the drop down menu. So it's kind of, you know, pick one. And if you have two sections, pick the other one for the other section, maybe. I'm not quite sure how to, how to fix that one. But I'm still researching that. So anyone who wants to ask a question as opposed to having posted it in the chat, I'll read it out for Chanda. Yeah. Um, Chanda, from Colleen, um, mm -hmm. a recommendation that maybe a column for course fees, or should that just be placed in comments? Um, we could place it in comments for now, but not a lot of courses have course fees. Okay. But if you guys want a column for course fees, I'd be happy to add it. Okay. And then from Allison, can roll four be unlocked? so that we can easily filter slash search? Um, I tried that and it won't let me. Okay. I, once it's locked, it's locked. <laughs> okay. And I can answer um, Jose's question. Um, the two-year template, we did not want to email it out, Jose, until we had a chance to go through this presentation. So you will get it. Yeah, and it's saved in Dropbox. I emailed all of you a link to your access for Dropbox. I'll email it again. Um, we're trying to find a place, I'm working with IT to find a place where we can all access it and edit it within the doc, within the location. Uh, Dropbox or OneDrive seem to be the best options right now. At the moment, it's in Dropbox. Perfect. I've got Dana and Sean asking a question, but there's one from Jeff Buell in the chat. Are we able to enter formulas in W2U for S Factor courses? Um, that I was not able to add either, but I can adjust it uh, when I see it in your for, in your schedules as they come in, I can go into those lines and, and put that in. And maybe we can work on an additional column too later. Chanda. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can work on that. Definitely. So, um, okay. The people who raised their hands, I see Stephen, Dana, and Sean. Feel free to go in reverse order because I believe that's the order in which they were asked. Sean, Dana, Stephen. Uh, yeah, so real quick, so I, I second on the, the student fees thing. It would be very helpful to have that um, column. And okay. as and and because uh, some of our fees are um, variable, some of our classes, like university travel classes and stuff, you know, it, it would basically be um, the fees that we want to, you know, apply. Because there's always there always seems to be an uh, or or there has been in the past confusion as to what it was supposed to be set at, and this would allow a a memorialized place where there wouldn't be any confusion. Um, another 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 suggestion for the the columns where they're um, like the um, GE requirements where there would be, you know, one comment or, or, or one category in another. Could you just insert a second column and just say additional GE or something of that nature so that that would that would cover it? Um, oh, certainly I could do that. And then yeah. uh, the other uh, and then I, w I just want to say I've been playing with the around with the stuff on the Dropbox. We've been, uh, my analysts and I have been sharing this tool through Dropbox for the last uh, bit, and it works very well to have it in that one centralized place. And I would say that um, even though we're fixing this and we're talking about adjusting it, I think this is a huge improvement on the previous tools that I've used. So I, I wanted to say thanks before we got much farther, even though there's still improvements to be made. I think this is very helpful. Thank you. Okay. So I've got notes for adding a student fees column, column for second GE requirements, um, and let me look at the column for S factor. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, yes. Can we add a column for crosses and prefixes, please? Yes. Okay. And Chanda, just one thing, like with that S factor, it may mm -hmm. be worth just adding a column that was like S factor, yes or no. And if it was yes, then it auto calculated that, you know, most of the time 0.33, you know, units per student instead okay. of having to have you do it on the back end. 
Yeah, definitely. I'd rather not do it on the back end. I'd rather have it right there ready for you. <laughs> right. Um, the other thing I want to note for you guys, um, just in, I was really carefully observing how everyone was using this before, using the last template before I dove into creating this one. Um, when you have a lab section and there's, I'll just I'll pretend this is a lab, um, and you've got this, the enrollment, if, it, if the courses, lectures and labs are linked, the, you know, the enrollments are fine, the student units are fine. Don't add in additional student units here um, unless you're splitting, you know, two, two and one. And you can add in the instructor units here. Um, reason being, if you add them in here, it falsely inflates your units and FTS. So I'm going to jump in here to remind everybody that by time certain, we've got five more minutes. Um, I know that Stephen has been waiting patiently with a question, Chanda. Yes. So if you would take that question and then uh, continue. Hi, Chanda. So on a previous screen or maybe part of the screen that's not on the screen right now, mm -hmm. there was something to mark required for the major or something like that? Uh, yes. Let me slide over to that. That is right here, major mm -hmm. required. Because my question about that was, let's say you have a course that's an elective, but the major requires a certain number of electives, so it's kind of like it's not maybe that simple. And then some of the courses that we have aren't required for the major, but they're required for a certificate in translation or interpretation. So I was just wondering if there's a way to capture that nuance, because it might not be technically required for the major, but it's required because you need to do a certain number of electives and we don't have that many electives. Can I explain Stephen, that? could that be captured in comments? Yeah, I don't know if there's comments. Would that comments go on? A, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, um, right here. I, I would think this would be a good place to capture that. And as time progresses and we see more and more patterns, mm -hmm. we can start adding it into a more logic-driven uh, spreadsheet. But... Um, you know, I know those unique things happen elsewhere, but yeah, note it. Definitely note it. I, th I think I know the answer to this, but real quick. So if it's a team taught course, um, we would enter it and then, and then make the WTUs, you know, like 1.5 instead of three or something. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then and the uh, remaining would be in reassigned. The remaining would be in reassigned time on the costing page. Uh, the other feature I want you guys to see is I put in, because there's always questions about meeting patterns. So on every schedule planning page, there is the Senate policy, meeting, approved meeting patterns. Oh, that's great. Okay. Um, any other questions? I think I've pretty much covered it. And these, these additions I can add in before you start planning the fall schedule into each of your templates. Tanda, it's Hilda, and maybe yeah. this is um, for a different time. But if you went back to the costing side when you were talking about including like, reassigned time and other grant buyouts and such, mm -hmm. um, I know we're really looking at that for the importance of tracking those monies and making sure that they come into the um, like department yeah where do we specify like for the especially tenure track like where what the amount would be are we assuming that in the award letters it should state the exact amount um of the you know the, the amount that we expect transfer because sometimes it says by units are we now demanding that every other office include an exact amount versus just units of money um, well, at this time, well, we're moving more towards MOUs, so MOUs should include the, all of that information. Um, but in the meantime, until we get that, you know, process in place, uh, we are at the, at this time reimbursing on, based on actuals, and you would put that on the annualized page, the amounts. And so you would figure out what that, you know, what that faculty member's uh, per unit salary is, and for tenure track, that would be, you know, their monthly times 12 divided by 30. Thank you, Chandler. 
You're welcome. Okay, any That's other... About one more minute. Anything else? I think the only thing that might be helpful, I don't think we need to do this for this time, but in the future iteration is where I've had issues in the past is with all these manually typed in things. So, so the WTU was coded incorrectly, um, you know, unintentionally, but, but if we can move more towards like a sheet, let's say for each program that lists each of the classes that has all the, the relative stuff in terms of like WTUs and lab fees and, and what have you. So that when you, that. so that when you populate one cell, those other three or four, because again, that's where I have introduced errors unintentionally um, with with that. So anyway, j just as a re future request or future pin in it. Yeah, thank, thank yeah, you. And that's definitely something I've been thinking about. I just don't know with curriculum changes and things. That's a tough one to track, but we'll we'll get there. Okay, thank you guys for your suggestions. I really appreciate all the feedback and 